Hi everyone, we're going to learn what the difference between nesting and subsequences are. Okay, you might not know what either of them are, so we're going to learn that too. Okay, so let's start with, uh, well, let's see them both in comparison. Basically, they're the same thing, they just have a slightly different ways of operating. Let's say that this particular thing here is getting quite complicated. Okay, so there's quite a few things going on. I want to, you know, there might be lots of layers, and it's just getting really unwieldy. So instead of just linking them or grouping them, you can select them. Okay, and you can right click either of them and you've got this nest and subsequence. Okay, so nest is mostly the one you're going to want. Okay, if you remember nothing, just nest them. So nesting, watch this, I'm going to give it a name. This is going to be my, uh, let's put this my outro. It's a got my outro. Okay, can you see it's just kind of smooshed it into one little graphic, which is nice, hidden away to make the timeline nice and tidy. What it's also done is it's put it here as a sequence over here. Okay, so you nest something, it creates a new sequence, puts it over here, and smushes it down on the timeline. The difference between that and, so I just did undo, exact same thing, right click, and if I do make subsequence, okay, what happens is it made that exact same thing over here, okay, our sequence, okay, didn't give it a name though, which is, I don't know, is it annoying? I don't know. Let's call this the outro. Okay, so we've done the exact same thing, except it doesn't compress it over here. The reason you use that over the first one is I'm make, using this to make a subsequence that I can use later on. Okay, I want to keep all this detailed here. I just want to have a nice little packaged version that later on I can go actually, uh, my outro, I'm going to whack it on there. You end up with the same thing. Can you see it's still that same kind of green package thing, just on the original, instead of being replaced with the green package, left it alone and just put it over here. Does that make sense? Let me make another one and nest it. So at the moment, that was the one that's a subsequence. If I right click this one and say, actually, I want to nest it. Okay, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this one outro two. Okay, you can see over here, I've still got that first one, which was a subsequence. This is the nest. They're exactly the same thing. Over here, the difference is what happened on the timeline. One of them was left unpacked and one of them was packed. And I could use either one of these because they're exactly the same. The new one over here, same, same. So uh, now that we know that they're kind of the same thing, um, well, let's show you how to dive in. So once you're into here, you're like, well, I need to make an adjustment. How do I do it? Double click it in there. You can see I'm inside outro two, the sequence, and I can make my adjustments. Let's say I home office and I change the f color to make it obvious. Okay, go back into my sequence and you'll notice it's changed. Let's go to the other sequence where I used it. Can you see it's changed in here too? So that's one thing to be mindful for. You're actually replacing it with a sequence and putting that sequence on the timeline and you can control it kind of globally, which can be a perk, especially if you're doing like intros and outros that are the same. You want to make a small change and you want it to spread throughout your project. It won't jump across different projects, but within a project, it will update and change. Does that make sense? I do this quite a bit when I'm working on my intros for, let me show you one. Let me show you this one. I've got way more complicated ones around, but I couldn't find them. <laughs> well, they're not on this machine at the moment, and they're too big to download. So you get this one here. It's an intro for, let's have a little look. It's an intro for one of my videos. Okay, a little jump cuts, but there's just a lot going on here. You just grab it all and say, you, missing font, it's okay. And say, let's just make you a nest, just to make it nice and tidy. Okay, so that later on I can go into this nest if I need to, but for the moment it's nice and tidy and kind of separated. I can still do edits like this. I can still do, oh, that reminds me of something else I wanted to show you. Uh, I can still animate it as a group. So watch this. Let's go back in time to, I think it's video 63. Okay, so I'm going to show you that one now. 63 or 64. Okay, I want to show you, remember we did this where we masked the background? Okay, now I wanted to at the time, but I was waiting for this part of the course, is I want to group these two. Okay, instead of grouping them, I'm going to nest them to tidy them up because grouping doesn't allow you to kind of animate them all together. So I'm going to call this one Ocean. And now because it's a nice little unit, okay, I can go to the beginning, I can go to my fix controls and say start the scale, go to the end, I'll go to the end here, back one keyframe so I can see it, and then scale it up a tiny bit. That's way too not tiny. I'm going to go 110%. Okay, and it's just going to slowly kind of move over time. Because that back, remember the, um, the sky wasn't actually animated? So it's a way of kind of doing that. You can do it with a pan now, slow zoom kind of dolly shot. 
now that they're all kind of stuck together in this nest. All right, are we all lost? A little bit. Let's uh, go back to that original thing we we're working on. Lots of projects open. Let's use our fancy shortcut. I'm gonna to go to, I use this little double arrows to go to the one that I was working on when we started this video. And I'm gonna say, you close all other projects, please. Do you wanna save them? Mm, why not? Not that one. Okay, so I've closed all those projects. I'm back into here. So let's say that we've created, I'm gonna delete the second one because basically they're the same thing. So I've got my outro. Now, what some people do is they'll work straight from the project panel into the timeline, okay, and do inserts. So let's say that I have got this outro and I wanna put it in here, okay. You can, you don't have to drag it over, you can use that shortcut. Remember the shortcut for insert, okay, when we're up here in the source monitor, you can avoid the source monitor, go straight to your timeline if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go here, and my uh, the shortcut is the comma key on your keyboard. You see I insert it, okay, and it inserts the nest, can you see? Actually, I'll patch it to the right um, track. See, it inserts it. If you turn this button here, this is an elaborate way of showing you what the heck does this button do? Turn that off, then if I use that same comma, it brings in the stack of individual parts, okay? Depends on what you wanna do. So that's what that button does. I never ever use it, <laughs> but now you know. But what is interesting is nesting sequences versus subsequences. Basically the same thing, except nesting squishes it down on the timeline you're working on. Subsequences leaves it unpacked. Both of them put your selection in a sequence in your project window. And now we know what that thing does. There will be somebody out there going, huh, that's awesome. I bet you there's only like two of you though. Anyway, let's get on to the next video.